think the last time I went fishing was 20-something years ago. I was wondering if you ever went, like, at all when you were a kid. Like, was your mom and dad into that kind of thing? Yeah, my dad wasn't, like, outdoorsy at all. Like, people thought he was, you know. And I think I probably went hunting, like, one time with him. And he, I think he felt bad about shooting an animal. So it was, like, not even a thing. I will dress a deer. I'll cook it and eat it. Um, God, that but I can't me out. shoot one. <laughs> it is great. Just cutting it open. One time, me and my girlfriend, we, somebody hit a deer on the road at Georgia, when we were at Georgia Southern. She said that deer's fresh. So we got the neighbor's truck and went and got it. And, um, and we, she skinned it out in the back of the truck. She's hardcore. She skinned it out in the back of the truck, cut it in quarters. We bled it out in salt water coolers overnight. And chunked it up and fried it and got a keg and had a huge party for the whole apartment complex. Really? We ate straight roadkill at Georgia I, Southern. If I had gone to college, I would have wanted to go to that college where you guys were and you would throw a party with them. We would probably be the... dead now if you know yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, look at this little place. Oh, this is, this is a good little liquor shop here. What are we gonna drink today? Jack Daniels. <laughs> I know. I know that's a dumb question to ask you. I like French everything. You're right. <laughs> I can't help it. I'm on a hillbilly budget, but um, <laughs> but I got I got fifty dollars from my boyfriend, so I can get us. Oh, right good, here. perfect. This. Perfect. Just the classics today. I got a classic country <laughs> rock star here. Fifty twenty four. So I, I'm gonna I'm gonna owe you like twenty four cents, man. But I'll catch you I'll catch y'all tomorrow. Right, it's fine. <laughs> All right, cool. Love it. <laughs> but, oh, should I? Is it illegal to walk out with you can, it like You this? can walk out however you like. Just walk, <laughs> <laughs> hold it over your head, you know, do all that good stuff. <laughs> you think anybody will notice? Or no, I don't notice. Okay, cool. <laughs> this is super. Nobody will see this. Super inconspicuous. You have a great day. Yeah, I got a reputation around here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like a kind of an only child vibe you yeah know? and yeah. but you have two i would like the only one between my parents and my youngest sibling is 15 but i'm actually the seventh between my two kids my two parents i see i'm 11th between mine so yeah, yeah and i'm the only one by my yes and I was so the it kind of isolates you a little bit even though there's a like lot of people around all the <laughs> yeah, time totally. you know it's like you're kind of isolated my parents would go on tour when i'm be at home and on school at school and I was like totally fine with it like yeah that meant I got to eat dinner in front of the TV and I got to like do my thing yeah and there's somebody bit. looking out, out for yeah yeah me. I was totally alone by myself Carlene Carter got a hardship driver's license when she was like 14 really yeah because wow. it's yeah hardship just because she needed to be able to drive herself yeah. John and Jane were like you know doing their thing yeah yeah that's funny she said she raised all kinds of hell all over hendersonville yeah where did what part of nashville did y'all live in when you were here near like brentwood areas where my parents house was and i pretty much moved right out of there to la and i was living in the house with my band and we came back and recorded a record like we lived in la but we came back here to do a record and then wow. we went back out there and we all lived in that house is that the band that you had before you went solo yes it's like, stargun stargun yeah. that's right i mean serious <laughs> shooter jennings fans know what's up oh god oh man i haven't been here since i was a kid <laughs> Do you think you're going to keep doing more pr production stuff? Yeah, I love it. When I was a kid, like when I would go to the studio with my dad, I, that was always my favorite thing when he would bring me. It was early television, and it was exciting. You know, it was Austin. <laughs> to be on Austin City Limits then, it was that was the mecca of alternative country music. Here's Amy Lou Harris with special guest yours truly at Austin City Limits. Only on circuit. Thank you. Tax audits. Tax liens. 
wage garnishments. Every day we hear stories like this about good folks who are simply struggling to pay their bills. Each of them are living a frightening IRS tax nightmare, and they are afraid it will destroy their lives. I'm a divorced single mom, and my ex-husband left me and the kids with a lot of unpaid bills, including unpaid taxes. I was really starting to show my stress on my kids because the IRS had sent me a letter demanding a huge payment from me. I couldn't afford it. So then the IRS was threatening to garnish my wages. I'm already living paycheck to paycheck. That would have put me over the edge financially. It truly seemed hopeless, but then a friend at work told her to call the tax relief line. The people at the tax relief line, they told me about something called innocent spouse relief. They worked it out so that all of the taxes from my ex are not my problem. I don't know how that works and, and I don't care. All I care about is that I don't owe the IRS a dime and they are not going to take my paycheck. Even if it seems hopeless, you should call the number on your screen right now. There is absolutely no cost for the call or the consultation. You are under no obligation. If you are worried that the IRS could garnish your wages, seize your assets, even take your home, call us right now. The tax relief line is here to help you. Now you have a knowledgeable, professional team of tax experts that are ready to negotiate with the IRS and fight for you to save you money. The Tax Relief Line's professionals have successfully negotiated thousands of cases, reducing and sometimes even eliminating the tax debt for their clients. It's very easy to get started. Simply call the number on your screen right now. You don't have to live in fear anymore. The call and the consultation are free. Hey guys. Hey, how are hey, you? Hey, fantastic. Y'all ready to go fishing? Are you yeah, Billy Flat? I'm Billy Flat. Man, you look fantastic. Hey, man. Well, how thank are you. you. Thank you. This how is you my friend you? Shooter. How you doing? Nice to meet you, man. Well, good deal. Let me have your stuff. Y'all get on board. Hey. Here you go. Don't, don't drop that. <laughs> Not dropping that. Two hands on that. That's right. Glad to have y'all on board. We're going to have a good time today. Might even catch an old fish. I've been telling him what a great fisherman I am, so... Yeah, I'm a horrible fisherman. You're a horrible fisherman? Horrible. We'll see what we can do about that today. All right. Uh, you know, I think you're probably the only person that could get me out in a boat fishing. <laughs> That's really the truth of the matter. Is you are, the like I person. said, you are a good friend. Well, you are a good You've friend. You've been a good friend to me. <laughs> Before I feel like I even really knew you, you were a good friend to me. Oh, I think you're awesome. Hang on, everybody. You know, I was little, like... And we'd go fishing, like, I, I thought that the colored fake worm bait, like, uh -huh. where they had, like, purple and yellow. Yeah, I thought, I, yeah, I thought those were awesome. That's, I liked those, but wanted to just keep them. I didn't want to use them to go fishing with them. Like, I would go to a bait store and be like, can I get, like, these worms? Yeah, <laughs> I wanted to eat them. I think I had a nutritional deficiency. I wanted to eat them, too. This plastic's good. Yeah. We were Rubber. druggies from way back, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. I'm going to get y'all started here. This button here, we're going to push it in. The spool's going to turn, and the lure's going to go all the way to the bottom. Now, we hit the bottom, so the spool stops slacking the line. Now, we're going to reel down just a little bit to where the rod is in this attitude here. And the reason we do that is so we can put that uh, jig on it like that. Yeah, okay, so we're jigging. Jigging. Okay. We're jigging. Well, well why didn't you out. say we was jigging? We are jigging. Jig it just a little bit. <laughs> Get jiggy with it. All right. And then set that hook. All, All right. right. Shooter, I'm ready. You're over here. There you go. Look at look what's happening over here with Elizabeth. I'm just so glad you told me all that. Oh, good night. You've got a big fish. I'm going to tighten your drag just a little yes, bit. Yes, it's winding you out. you got a real big fish. Oh, yeah, here we go. <laughs> He's got one over here, too. Yeah. Good night. Here we go. I mean, I'm trying to drink. 
Here we go. You're ready. He's ready over here. You Get just him. You, High five. you just keep. Uh, what do I do with it now? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to help you with it, Shooter. All right. Wow. What do we name it, Elizabeth? Fantastic. <laughs> Philip? Looks kind of like a Philip. Look Phillip. at here. Turn around here and smile at the camera. Look. We're going to throw it back. Don't worry. <laughs> Look love what it, you though. got, girl. Right in here. There you yeah. go. Wow. Whoa. Dang. Elizabeth, don't fool around. Wow. Look at the baby. Holy crap. There you go. Oh, that's good luck. She'll catch a bunch. <laughs> that's a big ass fish. I know. Are you God, sure there's he... not a guy under there in the scuba gear just hooked that on there? <laughs> that's one of my boyfriends down there. <laughs> that's right. I was going to ask you, like, why? Like, you said it, you always have, like, your front and center. And you got your keys rig up there. Yeah, I got. I feel like drum. you played drums. I got drum into drums first. That's and then, right. And then it then kind of got into piano, and then guitar was just kind of out of necess necessity, and I'm still not good at it. <laughs> I hate guitar. <laughs> People were like, "Hey, you want to come check out this awesome guitar I got?" And I'm like, like eh. I could give a. <laughs> f I'm not. Oh, really? I'm going I'm fishing with Elizabeth Cook. Did y'all do stuff like as a family that wasn't like music related? Yeah, I mean we we did we we do all kinds of stuff, but you know like he would I think he would take me out like we went out to Hank Jr.'s house and shot guns one time and <laughs> he'd try and do stuff like that, but right. then I think he realized pretty quickly that we were both in the same kind of ilk, we just weren't super outdoorsy people. <laughs> the record that you made on Tanya, I was just so thankful. <laughs> Oh. And so happy to have her voice back. Tune in to Circle for Red, White, and Willie. Enjoy a full day of programming featuring Willie Nelson on Monday, July 4th, starting at 1110 Central, only on Circle. Happy 4th of July from your Circle family. He served an 18-month sentence to establish his cover to infiltrate the Atlantic City empire of Sunny Steelgrave. Wise Guy comes to Circle. Wise Guy, weekdays, 3 2 Central. How can something be a. Sometimes it's okay to have our heads in the clouds. Then we can see what's coming. This is the team you can rely on to make your plans weatherproof. Forewarn Weather, protecting you when it matters most, helping you prepare for what tomorrow brings. We are ready. Steve Templeton and the Forewarn Weather Team. Yeah, we're watching out for you. Hey, Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry, I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Do clouds take naps? I couldn't tell you. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! You got this. You're there for them. We're here for you. Find free care guides mm -hmm. at aarp.org slash caregiving. Wrinkles and sagging skin. Is your body storing fat more easily? Do you suffer from a lack of energy or the draining side effects of restless sleep? What if I told you it's not your fault? It's just a part of the normal aging process. Hi, I'm Kim Lyons. As a fitness expert, I have always been on the hunt for the next great breakthrough. And that's why I was so excited to learn about the youth hormone associated with reducing body fat, increasing lean muscle mass, and even reducing wrinkles. It's called Human Growth Hormone, or HGH. And as early as your mid-20s, your natural production begins to drop dramatically. The solution? Cerevital. 
Cerevital is the only amino acid complex shown in a clinical trial to trigger the body's own natural release of HGH from the pituitary gland and increase mean HGH levels by an astonishing 682%. I would definitely say that Cerevital has turned back the clock for me. Other people, my nieces and nephews, would say things like, your skin is glowing, and I'd be like, really? Cerevital boosts your HGH naturally and at a fraction of the cost of painful synthetic HGH injections. I am 50, and Cerevital gave me my youth back. Cerevital sells for $99 in stores, but call right now because we're letting as many women as possible try Cerevital for 30 days absolutely risk-free. Plus, call in the next six minutes and we'll also include free shipping. You owe it to yourself to try Cerevital for 30 days. It's absolutely risk-free. Backed by four clinical trials, Cerevital is a true scientific breakthrough, 20 years in the making. Find out why over 4 million boxes of Cerevital have been sold. Call 800-719-8755 or go to TriCeraVital.com. How you doing? Good. Good. It's like concentrating. <laughs> like, <'cause> I, <laughs> Don't yeah. f*** it up. Don't f*** this up. Whatever you do. The, the good thing about jigging is it only takes one hand. Did you get one? Yeah. Is he on there? Did you set it? Set the hook. Hey. Yeah, there baby. You go. Yeah. Come on. Look, he's, he's pissed. This one's pissed. Well, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I mean, you got him good, baby. And have just leave that hook in when you throw him back. <laughs> I mean, I this part of it up. Yeah, you did great. Bye, baby. She's like, you know, we're not really fishing, we're just piercing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, define fishing. Yeah, I'm, I'm learning. I mean, it's really probably been 20 years since I've been fishing, and I don't remember ever really catching many, so you might have, <laughs> whatever curse my dad had, I may, you may well, have Well, you ain't never it. been with me in Billy's life. That's right. So I'm just jiggering, I'm trying to. Do trying you to think you're gonna keep doing more pro production stuff? I I love it. I, I I'm like then we did like eight records since November of last God, year. God, are you serious? Yeah. So it's and like, toured your record. Yeah, that was that was what made it tough because it's like sometimes some of the records take longer than I want to take because I have to leave, but. Um, but it was, yeah, I love it. I, I always loved it. When I was a kid, like, when I would go to the studio with my dad, I, that was always my favorite thing when he would bring me. I love having to solve the arrangement Rubik's Cube of every song and kind of having to go through and find the best way to make the song kind of pop and then, you know, spending the time to add things to it and all that. I just love kind of creating something out of nothing. What do you like better? Do you like touring better or do you like no. or do you like recording? I like fishing. <laughs> that's right. That's why you're. That's right. We were um, on a boat. I mean, I love. I like writing songs. I like writing. Yeah. And then I perform it because it's sort of an occupational hazard. You're right. You know, right. you gotta. Yeah. You gotta perform it then. Like, so people hear it, I guess. It's like if you don't, then it's like a tree fell in the woods, I guess. It's like having to touch but the fish. putting together songs and, and then they're so mysterious to me still. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, me too. I love that. God, the the record that you made on Tanya. Oh. God. Yeah, that thanks. made me so happy. Yeah, she's, that know, was great. Hold on, I gotta catch this fish. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> hold on, I gotta catch hold on, this fish. Hold, that thought. hold my cigarette. Um. I mean, I just felt like she was kind of getting overlooked a little bit. Yeah. So that you and Brandy made that record on her. Just, I was just so thankful. No. And and so happy to have her. Her voice back, you know, yeah, cause, I mean, she's crazy. She's such a good singer and it's it's insane. You know, she she doesn't like the kind of 
career resurgence concept, which really wasn't the Because she's point. like, I never went away, bitches. This is her first one in like 12 or 13 years, and it's definitely the first one since her dad died, which was a huge part of her life and everything. I didn't everything. know. Okay. Yeah, she still talks about him. I didn't know he had passed. I think that Tanya thought that, and her whole crew thought that me and Brandy were nuts, because we like kind of were like, yeah, we're doing this record, you know. And she was kind of like, what record? But then she got there, and then she realized how much Brandy loves her and, like, was a yeah. fan of hers, and, and it kind of, like, she got comfortable. She started to trust the material. All right, guys. It's starting to rain. Have y'all had fun? Heck, yeah. Yeah. I can't believe I caught as many fish as I did. Y'all did. Y'all caught some fish. Well, that's fantastic. If y'all want to, since it's starting to rain, you've had a good time, let's, let's head on back. Okay. All right. There's nothing I would have rather done with you than go fishing. <laughs> Drink. Thank you, Billy. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank you good. for putting us on the big ones today. Oh, thank you. Y'all was great. Oh, yeah, man. Man. We were pretty you, great. We've had a great so time. Were you. Well, I can't good. believe I caught a fish, man. I really appreciate <laughs> it. Well, you caught some nice fish. <laughs> thank we you did. so much. Thank, thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to bug you again because I like your boat quite a bit. Good deal. We'll All go right. anytime. Right. Very nice Let's to meet you. Have a great day. Bye. My dad got a, his ear pierced, but he went to Claire's in the mall. <laughs> So, like, <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of good information, lot of information coming out here. right now. Why is everyone talking about navage and nasal irrigation? I am one who suffers from chronic sinus infection. You need to clean that crap out of your nose. The science is simple. Allergens and germs invade through your nose. Navage is an all-natural way to clean your nose using powered suction to flush out allergens, mucus, and viruses. Navaj makes nose cleaning easy so you can breathe better, sleep deeper, and feel healthier. I love this thing. It's nice to breathe. Navaj, clean nose, healthy life. Boomstick Trio. Boomstick Trio. Boomstick Trio. Glimmer, color, and glow. It's absolutely perfect. I don't need any other cosmetics. Best spontaneous purchase ever. I love this stuff. I get giddy. That's the Boom Beauty Glow. At GoToBank, we're for the go-to people in life. That's why we created the ultimate banking app. Easy to use and no monthly fees with direct deposit. Do I get free ATMs? Pay my bills? Yes and yes. It's mobile banking at its best. Open an account at GoToBank.com. Carl never really thought much of his credit scores until he got credit karma and used his scores to score more. Like this less humble, humble abode. That's what I'm talking about, Carl. Credit Karma. Download the free money app where your hard work pays off. Hey, all, I'm Jordan Davis, and Country Plays here. Have you heard the Shooter Stein guy on the, t on the radio? The what? There's a guy. Okay, so my name actually came from the fact that there was this, in my mom's church, there was another couple they had a son named Shooter, and my dad and my mom were in the Western thing. I thought so it was because you peed on the doctor when I, you it were It is, born. but that, that's... I swear to God, I heard that. That, that, that you is, peed that on did the happen. doctor. Yeah, I peed on the okay. nurse, and that actually sealed the deal. But the, okay. what, the first time they heard it as a name was this guy named Shooter Stein. He was a couple years older than me, and he has now grown up here. He owns a security company, like a home security, like, you know, you put in your house for your alarm. Oh, okay. And he has all these commercials where he's like, hi, I'm Shooter Stein. Oh, my <laughs> it's God. Like, oh, God, all right. Hey, how you doing? Good to see you. Good to see you, too. What's going on? A lot of nuts. Can we get a cold drink? Yes. Yeah. We've been fishing all day and we were pretty amazing. So we've got, we're pretty thirsty. This is the best seat for when the band starts. It's a cool stage. Yeah. And there's a disco ball they fire up. Have you played in here? I mean, probably. <laughs> yeah, I mean, sat in for a song and stuff. But I've never done, like, a full set. I'd like to. Mm. Yeah, it's a cool place. You know, you built your own thing, but you're a child of country star. And I, and, and I know some children of country stars right. that 
have the syndrome or something. Like, it's got to be super complicated. You don't seem to have any problem with it. I got the luckiest, the smartest thing I did, and it was moving away from here. Nobody gave a about who Waylon was really out there. And I think for that reason, it made it harder, but it made it like different it was you had different. to own your own merit yeah and it was like so and yeah. that was great i mean when i was young my dad didn't want me to move to la because he was like you're a big fish in a little pond here and you're going to be a little fish in a big pond there right and he was right but it was right for me but it was the right thing the expectations didn't even really come into play until i got on the road the first time with that first put the O record. Then I started realizing there was this like Wayland factor and I could never really gauge how many people were there because of my music or because of my dad's music right. or because of what they thought it would be, you know? So yeah. I kind of never built a, a really strong trust with my audience. We, my family didn't read music or anything like that, but we had one piece of sheet music in the house and it sat on my daddy's Fender Rhodes keyboard. And it was I'm Not Lisa. Really? And it was an illustration of that album cover. Really? Yeah. And wow. Like, you know. Oh, my God. I didn't know you had that. You didn't that. know I had that? I did not know you had that at all. <laughs> For many reasons. Oh, man. That is too funny. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. And I don't know. She was always, like, had a big impact and role. She had a, a, a big role for me in my pursuit of music. I don't know. There's there's just a real power in not only like what she did musically, but then like being, you know, the love of your dad's life and your mom and like I don't know, special lady. Oh, she is. Did y'all have like a game room, like a yeah, billiard we, room? I had like a we had like a basement and it was like kind of I took it over when I was. Did it have dead. a pool table in it? No, but I was really into. Arcade games, I still am. And so he would like, you know, we'd occasionally he'd get get one or like whatever. I, m I remember George Ritchie gave me a Tammy Wynette's Miss Pac-Man machine. I was gonna days. say Tammy Wynette had Miss Pac-Man, didn't she? Yeah. yeah. God, I knew it. That is so awesome. <laughs> God, <laughs> of course she did. My dad got sober. He didn't drink. Everybody thinks he drank, but he didn't drink at all. But he did other stuff. And mm -hmm. like but he got off that when I was like five <laughs> again. Wow. Around then. Like he would order like a salty dog. <laughs> yeah. And then drink like half of it. You know? Why did he drink you wanna hear a funny story? Dog. This is how I it, love that so much. But I mean he was Maybe like one had Miss Pac Man. Yeah. <laughs> drink salty dog. This is an excellent My dad got a, his ear pierced because see I, I got mine pierced. You know, we were really close and he so he wanted like and I got tattoos and he's afraid of needles. But he got his ear pierced. But he went to Claire's in the mall. <laughs> Because he, he, like, the, he didn't know where a tattoo parlor, he didn't know the culture of it at all. And so he went to the mall, and I, he was, you know, like, 54-year-old Waylon Jennings, like, Go in that chair Claire's. with, like, some 14-year-old girls. Like, There's a lot of good information, <laughs> of information coming at me there. right now. Yeah, so, you know, he was, it was funny, because he was just so, couldn't have been, like, less of, like, an outlaw. Thank you Such for coming fishing day. with me. I, I love, love you so much. much. I do anything. And, and I, I got had you. such a nice day. You did? Yes. Sweet. I got you parting presents. Oh, sweet. Um, Shred it open. So I'll, yeah, kid. I'll let you open it. Yes. Well, A, you're going to need a t-shirt with my yes. name on it. Yes. Boom. Yeah, oh, I love it. Amazing. Thank you. Amazing. <laughs> love it. And because we both have been <laughs> on Squid Dilly, yes. you have to have a booty, booty hunter hunter. hat. Thank you so much. No, I love you. Thank you. I had such a good time. I did too. I'm just happy you you called on me to do it.
Captain Mike. Captain Mike, taking yes, us here. Help me out. On this there you go. Taking us fishing today? Yes, ma'am. Sweet. Mick Foley is supposed to come, so we'll see if he shows up. But I think he will. Wrestlers are pretty reliable. What are we fishing for today? <laughs> Price, snook, and redfish. Hey there. Look at yonder coming. <laughs> Mr. Mick Coley. Yes, it's Let's what a pleasure good. to meet you, nice Elizabeth. Nice to meet you. Come on aboard. Oh, I've been <laughs> looking forward to this for a long time. <laughs> Thank sure. you. I'm so happy you could come. This is Captain Mike. He's hey, going to... Nice to meet you. Captain Mike. How are you doing? Good. Do you fish much? Uh, when I was little, I fished, but it's been about 20 years, so I might need a little guidance. Wow, what a gorgeous morning. This is usually about the time I'm going to bed. Really? So you stay up all Sometimes night? Sometimes 7 30 a.m. Yeah. Do you think that your wrestling career created yeah. that clock? I it think did. the same thing about yeah. touring. It's like I work, I just don't do the same hours that y'all do. Just because I'm still late up at noon, don't mean I'm lazy. <laughs> I, I agree with you. And I always did my best thinking at night. So when I'm reading about you and diving in more, I'm thinking about there's all these ways that you had set up a wrestling match that goes beyond athletics just as much maybe even more than an athlete it's you're creative yeah an yeah, artist yeah i thrive in trying to come up with ways to entertain people and we wanted to give people a memory that would last a while what's behind that an overwhelming need to be loved <laughs> that's what <laughs> I didn't know at the time, Elizabeth, but when I went to WWE in 1996, I'd already been doing the wrestling stuff for 12 years, and I was I was assigned a mask. The but, mankind mask. Yeah, the mankind mask. mask. Okay. So uh, I had heard over the years that Mr. McMahon was not a fan of mine, and specifically the way I looked, physically, but also facially, and. Um, he didn't think I looked like a star. I came in in 1995, although I debuted in early 96. Have the mask and had a, exceeded everybody's expectations for me, including my own. And then I find out 15 years after the fact that it all came down to a booking meeting in the fall of 1995 where my name got brought up and he slammed his hand down on the table and said, all right, I'll bring him in, damn it. But I'm covering up his face. Wow. And that was my big break. Yeah, but you had already done uh, Cactus right. Jack. I, right. Been through that. So, but I, I remember um, being so frustrated because that mask is hard to breathe through. But now you jump ahead. Years after I retire, I find out that it was that Mankind character, especially as he kind of went through stages and lightened up, that made other people feel like there was someone else out there who didn't quite fit in. Right. And that... I, I, that was never, yeah. To you. That was never my goal, though. I wanted to entertain. I wanted to shock, but I never. You don't thought. always get to choose, do you? No, but I, but looking back, like wow, I comforted people. I made them laugh. Yeah. Um, I that wasn't what I was in it for, but that turned out to be kind of my strong suit. Are we gonna go fast now? Yeah. Okay, right, be easy. A, easy. We're both very fragile people in different ways. Here? Yes, ma'am. We won't be in any water. Y'all can't stand up in all day. Okay. Wow. That's quite a It's impressive. Right where he wanted to put it, too. If you get a bite, just start reeling, just okay? Start reeling. Should I reel up? Yeah, you can reel up and we'll cast back. Oh, this is a monster. Look at that thing. Get your rod up. Get your rod high. Get it high? Yeah. Oh, it's a me. monster, Elizabeth. Bone. This is Hemingway stuff here. Come on. You, he's going to pull me into the water. Oh, look at that bad boy. It's a monster. I it's thought you were kidding. It's got to be a record there. Is that a catfish? <laughs> it is a catfish. How did you get a catfish? 
Wow, look at that. And we're in the Gulf of Mexico. Oh, man, because I'm good. Climate change. <laughs> I don't know. Man, yeah. I didn't see that coming. Do I hold it? Yes, get it. Now get that bad. Get it. All right, all right. Whoa. Look at this guy. <laughs> this might inspire a whole other character. <laughs> Catfish well, Jack? he came back as Catfish Jack, where Cactus Jack went to live under the water. You know, it's coming to fruition because when I was learning to wrestle, I didn't tell my college housemates because I thought they would ridicule me. And then when I got to school for the sum for after the summer of 1986, I'd had my second and third matches. Mm -hmm. I was in pretty rough shape because a guy named the Dynamite Kid had dislocated my jaw because it was a TV match. And, of course. But when I got there, they said, you, we know you've been wrestling. Your name is Catfish Jake. So okay. uh, there I am, Catfish Jake. I've read about it. Because then you like, sleep in your car. Yeah. And, you know, you're li living a double life this whole time <laughs> in secret from them. Oh my god. The whole thing blows my mind. <laughs> yeah. See? It's harder than it looks. It is hard. I know. Nice redfish? Yes, sir. Heck yeah. <laughs> That's a good one. That's good. You can quit reeling. Quit reeling. Just now just swing him around to me, okay? There you go. Put your tip down. There you go. Wow. This is one of the greatest fishing exhibitions. <laughs> You're pretty much killing it. Thank God I'm here. <laughs> so one of the things I did not know about you... Got a dollar. <laughs> did you want to take it? I'm trying to have a serious conversation. Go ahead and you take it. Oh, okay. All right. That looks like a good one. Oh, you're better at it than me, for sure. Oh, look at that. That's another redfish, right? Oh, yeah. He saw me falling in the boat. He's like, no, I ain't getting in that boat. That's a little bigger, I think. That's even bigger than mine? You're right. Pretty good. Look at that, and I think that looks really painful. It and does you look painful. That was my hold, the mandible claw. I need to talk I'm to you about right that. Right in there, underneath the tongue. I need to talk to you about that. Yeah. A barracuda, don't Ooh. touch that. Oh, I broke it. It was so big, mean. Ooh. Right off the barracuda. Did you see his paint? Oh, he was scary. He was coming for you. So it is literally describing my life. I drive you true. It was a special song, no matter who sang it. God has done some amazing stuff with it ever since then. Circle presents Country Sessions, the stories behind the hits. You can go from working on the car to church just by tucking it in. I don't wear a bra because it takes the wrinkles out of my neck. When you don't properly maintain your sleep equipment, you could get sick. And so could your whole family. Sleep equipment manufacturers recommend daily cleaning. And as a helpful complement to your daily routine, So Clean 3 can provide peace of mind. Order now and save $100 at SoClean.com. Save more with the Walmart Money Card, a debit MasterCard. Like 3% cash back at Walmart.com, plus overdraft protection and no monthly fees with direct deposit. Save money, live better. Available in-store or at WalmartMoneyCard.com. At Rulala, feel like a million bucks without paying the price. Seize the deals on top names before they're gone. Get in to never miss out. Shop Rulala.com today. Here's to hard workers, the holding down two jobbers, the making the paycheck stretchers. Here's to the bad to fair credit scores, and those bills were just a little bit later. And good to go, we see you. We know you have the drive, you just can't afford to drive. Good to go is here to give you auto insurance when others won't. For as little as 20 bucks down and low monthly payments, good to go makes it easy to get approved, insured, and back on the road fast. Get the coverage you need, instant proof of insurance, and be on your way. We know you're going places. Let us help you get there. When others say no, we say you're good to go. Visit goodtogo.com. 
You think you got what it takes to make it as a gumshoe? Put your skills to the test with June's Journey, the detective game where spotting hidden clues helps catch devious criminals. So are you going to tell me about last night's incident? We can do this the easy way. Or... Honey, have you seen the... dog? I don't want to know. There's a detective in all of us. June's Journey. Download now for free. How many kids do you have? Four. Four. Okay. Three boys and one girl. And there isn't there an age difference between? Yeah, yeah. 29, 27, 20, and 18. My son, Mickey, he's uh, why I wear this autism acceptance bracelet, right? Oh. He had asked when he was 13, he asked for a drum set. And about a week after his birthday, I'm listening to something come from the basement. I turned to my daughter and I said, is that Mickey? And he yeah. sounded like somebody who had lessons for months. And he just would pick things up. He would listen to it by ear. And the same traits that would kind of make him <laughs> uncomfortable in regular social situations, like the genuine OCD. Mm -hmm. As a musician, he doesn't think anything of playing the same, working on the same chords for two hours. Oh, right. So you need to. Yeah. It's way better if you right. can. Yeah. yeah. So we're fishing for snook here? Yeah, we're going to try to hook a snook or two and call it a day, I guess. Hook a snook. Oh, way high. Ah. Here, one of y'all. Mick, you want to do it? Sure. Oh, we got one? All right, nice. You sure you don't mind? Uh, please. Oh, this is a world record type of snook. Yeah. This, nah, it's barracuda. A barracuda, don't Ooh. touch that. Oh, it broke it. It was so big. Yeah. Mean. Ooh. It right off, didn't it? Barracuda. Did you see his teeth? Oh, he was scary. He was coming for you. How many concussions have you had? You know, I, I had about eight diagnosed. I was just talking about this. I did a little seminar for a friend's wrestling school. And I said, we didn't know that just seeing stars was signs of a head injury. So when I was asked by the doctor, like, how many times have you seen stars? Like, at first I thought it was a joke. And I was like, hundreds? And he was like, hundreds? I was like, that was like, I'm not trying to sound like a tough guy, but that was a sign to me that something had looked good. You know, when I saw stars. But at any point, are you ever thinking like, Maybe. Not then, what? because, like, you know, we didn't know as much about head injuries as we do now. Like, if I just put my hand up in between my face and the chair, no one would have known the difference. They would have gotten the exact same reaction. Are those the kind of tricks they use now? Well, uh, yeah, and the chairs are a lot more limited than they were. You don't hit anybody in the head with a chair anymore. You're kind of responsible for driving that sport to its extreme point. Like the turning point. Maybe, yeah. 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 With the, the hail in a sail. Yeah, that was... I that heard was, about that. I was pushing the envelope a little bit. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, for better or worse, yeah, I was one of the guys that uh, pushed it in a... But they were doing that in Japan already. Yeah, they were doing some wild stuff in Japan. And I think to this day in Japan, I'm known as the king of the death match. That's what they called it over there. That's fair. On a chance thing, I ended up using a sock puppet as a way to cheer up Mr. McMahon in the hospital. And it went on to be this, like, fabled moment in wrestling lore. Coming up on the Southern Weekend, sweeping staircase vistas with Smithfield. We can know what each other's going to do before we do it. We like to call it our duo marriage. Adorable animal ambassadors. Easy riding with Craig Campbell. Is it true that Luke Bryan fired you from being his keyboard player? He just said, man, you don't need to be anybody's side man and a wild waterside hangout. Whoa! Personal foul. What the feezy? You can't use a beard trimmer below the 50-yard line. This is the Waterproof Lawnmower 4.0 by Manscaped. What's the difference? It's got new skin-safe technology to help reduce cuts and nicks. It's powerful. Yeah, gentle. Just like me. Dog, I appreciate you. Ooh. Hey, watch out. Uh, I'm not tickled. Get yours at manscaped.com. 
save more with the Walmart Money Card, a debit MasterCard. Like 3% cash back at Walmart.com, plus overdraft protection and no monthly fees with direct deposit. Save money, live better. Available in-store or at WalmartMoneyCard.com. You deserve more from your steak. You deserve the only steak that's guaranteed to be perfect every single time. At Omaha Steaks, we're delivering old school quality with a now school mentality. That means aging every steak for tenderness, carefully hand carving, and obsessing over every last detail. So you never second guess a single bite. For a limited time, get four free chicken breasts and four free pork chops with your order. Go to omahasteaks.com slash TV today. You deserve this. What is the best credit card? You know Credit Karma shows you cards based on your credit profile, right? And you can see your approval odds before you apply. We have to move again, don't we? Find and apply for your next credit card easily through Credit Karma. Mmm, last night was so amazing. Hell yeah, it was. <laughs> What's up, Bruce? You're going for round number two? You know it. Get your first month free at Chew.com. Get your rod up. Rod up. Crap. Son of a nutcracker. Well, you can help me. <laughs> Want me to help you? Yeah. Right. Very heavy. It's a little fish, but it acts like a on. big fish. Not even worth it. Tell you this little <laughs> little guy. Look at him. Look at that little fella. What is that? It's a Jack Curvel. Jack fish. Okay. It's really cool. You pinch them little black dots on their gills. They won't move. Wow. Oh, it paralyzes them. Mm -hmm. I got a That's uh, like, that. like my mandible claw. That was a <laughs> yeah. Nerve hole. Yeah. What was that about? A sock? Well, the sock uh, the sock came two years after the hold. So got it? it's got the greatest backstory of any wrestling hole. And the backstory is Dr. Sam Shepard, who was the protagonist that both the TV series and the movie The Fugitive was based on. In real life, he was never completely exonerated, but he became a wrestler and because he was small in stature. He used his knowledge of the human anatomy, and he developed the mandible claw, which is a nerve hold where you simultaneously press down on the nerves underneath the tongue while pressing up on the nerve underneath the point of the chin. Okay. And uh, I pitched it to Mr. McMahon, and he liked it. I pitched him on the whole idea of it being very visual, that face, he's big on facial expressions. So therefore, my head was very close to my opponent's head, so you could get two facial expressions. And I could do it to anyone at any time. It wasn't like I'd be sore for two weeks from dropping an elbow on concrete. Right. And it's just hand work. Yeah. And then just uh, on a chance thing, I ended up using a sock puppet as a way to cheer up Mr. McMahon in the hospital. And it went on to be this, like, fabled moment in wrestling lore. And the next day, I got to the Joe Louis Arena in Detroit, and I was told, like, that people had made up signs, and they were chanting so I don't know why it connected with people. And that was 1998. And 23 years later, you know, it still gets a reaction. We do a worldwide Saco sale, and we'll sell a 1,000 of them in two days, yeah. <laughs> It's kind of crazy, oh, right? Man, I, I'm thinking way too hard, I think, about, about my career. But as time went by, and I realized how much people related to that character, I was like, you know, I don't mind being the guy with the sock. That makes me feel really good, yeah. you know? Makes me, I thought I had, seriously, I thought I had an 18-month shelf life when I stopped wrestling full-time in 2000. And 21 years later, yeah, it's just crazy that... Kids are recognizing me for something I did, you know, in 1998 with The Undertaker. What's your greatest accomplishment? Oh, man. Maybe it was the first book I wrote. Yeah? How many? Because you're six. Oh, first one was, it was considered ludicrous that a wrestler was going to attempt to write his own book. And so when I told Judith Regan, my publisher, I was having, having some trouble with the ghostwriter, she said, we'll find somebody else for you. I said, 
I was thinking about doing this on my own. I was met by just silence, you know? And so I said, what if I hand you a chapter and see if you like it? And I just started writing my legal pads. And then I asked the guys in the dressing room if they want to hear what I wrote. And so it was really a magical feeling because at first it was two guys and then they started reacting. And then it was four people. All of a sudden I had this audience. <laughs> they were listening and laughing. And I thought, well, this is kind of what I love about wrestling. And I'm not getting hurt doing this. I loved it, you know, and I made up for the lack of a uh, technical flair with the passion for it. I want to take you to see some mermaids at Wiki Watchy. Have you ever been? I've never been, but I've always wanted to go. Today's your lucky day. Yes. It's happening. Wrestling is a pretty tough road. You don't seem to have an ounce of cynicism in you or resentment. It's remarkable. A lot of people say, you know, thank you for your service. When someone approaches me and says, thank you for your service, I say, thank you, and that means a lot, which it does. But I think a lot of times people say that because they don't know what to say. I would much rather they say, who can I help? We all have a duty to the bravest of our country. I'm Dan Nevins. I sacrificed my legs while serving in Iraq. But I'm so proud to speak now for the organization that has given me my life back. Prior to Wounded Warrior Project, I was not in recovery. You're protecting the people in your country. Pumps you up, makes you feel good. And then all of a sudden, it's all gone. It's all gone. At Wounded Warrior Project, your gift of $19 a month provides free programs and services that can change a person's life forever. I was shot five times. It took years to recover. Wounded Warrior Project has given me my ability to, to be a full-time dad again. I really appreciate what they do for me. The Wounded Warrior Project, they, um, is from the heart. Please, join Wounded Warrior Project with your gift of just $19 a month. And when you call or go online at honorwarriors.org, we'll send you this Wounded Warrior Project blanket. If you have been a donor to Wounded Warrior Project, you have helped countless veterans, I would be here in front of you today. I give Wounded Warrior Project my life. So if you see me and you really want to thank me for my service, donate to Wounded Warrior Project. I think that would be a great way to thank me for my service. Please, call or go online right now. This is my friend Mick Foley. Hey, John, how are you doing? Hey. Pleasure to meet you. Tell us all about this, where we are, and what just happened. Well, Wiki Watchy Springs is one of Florida's oldest roadside attractions. This show has been around since 1947. And what keeps this park so unique is that they're swimming in a first magnitude spring. We're the ones sitting in this submerged theater. So it creates about a five mile an hour current where the girls are swimming. So it, it really gives you a little bit more appreciation of the skill and the athletic ability yeah. that these young ladies have. Do you have. think he could do that? I, I'll be willing to take a dive in there. Instead of like, what, hell in a sail? Yeah. You could do barter in the water. There you go. Like right, way, you go. Like Slaughter easier. in the water. I'm going to dive in. Okay. Okay, thanks. <laughs> I'll make sure the mermaids are there to say. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, thank you so much. You should go grab a drink somewhere or Let's something. Do that. that sounds and, great. Yes. Well, you guys take care. I Come again soon. Thank you. Okay. Right. Bye, John. Bye, Elizabeth. Bye. See you. Here we are. <laughs> At the world famous. Different than the last place. The drunken mullet. The drunken mullet. If I was a mullet, I'd hey get guys. drunk too. Hello there. How are you? Welcome Hi. to the drunken mullet. I want some of that vintage, lousy food. 
Vintage lousy food. Yeah. That's what we're known for. And, you got the, it. and the warm beer and lousy food. Warm beer, lousy food. What are your drink things here? What Frozen are people? Drinks? Yeah, any Pina of colada, it. strawberry daiquiri. We got full liquor bar. We have draft beer. What's your favorite thing? I, I like margaritas. I'm gonna have a margarita. All right. For you? I'm gonna go with a pina colada. Nice. All right, Tropical you got player. it. I'll be right back, guys. Thank you. I imagine there's got to be an alligator or two in there, right? Oh, yeah. For sure. That looks like a natural color Gosh, oh. of nature. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers right there. Yes. Mm. Well, yeah. <laughs> what is family meant? to you through all this because it's not an easy lifestyle no, I mean, we were yeah, talking about yeah. that it's tough to travel it's tough to beat up your body the emotional there's substances around there's this uh a ring announcer i asked him if i could ride with him from jacksonville to atlanta he asked me why we want to do that because i had a flight the next morning and i told him if i ride with you i can be home when my children wake up and I, he said I was so animated, it was obviously so important to me. And then he said, like, this man that uh, so many people thought of as being the hardcore legend was really just a sentimental slub. <laughs> and I was like, that's it? Like, you think I'm going to be offended by that? That's one of the nicest things anybody's ever said about me. <laughs> I know that it's like, especially early on in wrestling, it's a pretty tough road. You don't seem to have an ounce of cynicism in you. Or resentment. It's remarkable. And I, I can't say that I could still completely, like, understand where it all comes from. But you are remarkable. Did you say the same exact thing to Sturgill Simpson? I did not. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so tell me about this one-man show situation. 2009, I had a chance. Was it, you want to do stand-up comedy? Uh, the thing that makes me stand out are, is these, are the stories, and I'm shying away from them. Sometimes I wouldn't want to talk about wrestling right. at all. Right. And I really came to grips with my, you know, my legacy. I learned to be proud of it instead of feeling I had to prove something else to other people. Everybody who's in the ring is post-wrestling trying to find something that makes them feel like they did. It's not like music where you can get together with your friends and perform it. I mean, there comes a time when you have to stop being that guy. Because your body Yeah, starts. you can't do it anymore. Yeah. Some nights, not every night, but there were some nights where it felt so much like being in that ring. I really love doing it. And I love thinking of different stories and different ways to try to get that reaction. Performance art, right? Right. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank Anything you so much. Else right now, you're welcome. Can I get like 80 more napkins? 80 more, yeah, yeah absolutely. Thank Everything's you. delicious. So good. Thank you so much for doing ah, this. It's show. been a great day. You're a beautiful person, well, and it's a privilege to get to well, know you. Uh, and thank you for spending time with me with everything in the world that you you're do. You're one of my favorite people on the air, and now you're one of my favorite people in real life. And I think it was an honor to be here with you. So thank, thank you. you so much. This is my phone. It's also my new bank. Go to Bank, the ultimate app that makes banking super easy. There are no monthly fees with direct deposit, and I get 10 times the national average on my savings. It's mobile banking at its best. Open an account at gotobank.com. At Rulala, feel like a million bucks without paying the price. Seize the deals on top names before they're gone. Get in to never miss out. Shop Rulala.com today. I'm here to cultivate something in full bloom, with all its use. eHarmony gets to know you better to match you better. eHarmony, here for real love.